You know, when you work directly with the hands in this scale, it's the advantage is that the hands have an intuitive understanding of geometry and um, construction and all that. So if we don't leave out our hands in the process like we do nowadays in the digital age, we can just un unblock some more ideas, I think. So that's why we are we're thinking that this could become a basic shelter, which is more than a tent. It's like a lightweight house. If you, if you just take a paper, it, it just hangs. There's no way it can hold itself. But the moment I introduce a curve, here, there's a curve, so the paper is holding and it can even take weight on it. Now the more I fold it, it becomes so strong that I can not only take this, but I mean I can put a lot more weight here, I can put at least a pencil box on it and it can stay. Basically we are first of all trying to see if it is possible to make uh, something so thin and rigid, you know, if it's possible. So we, our principle is to try to use the structure of folding patterns and using that kind of geometry in order to bring about engineering efficiency because you can't just keep trying to save material and say this is a bad material and this has a impact on, you know, negative impact on the environment. Sometimes it's more clever to use some cement and some of it judiciously, but if you also involve engineering, then you can use all of it with very little volume of those materials so that you have you strike a balance between durability and maintenance as well as a permanent structure this is the dimension when the whole structure is open to decide at which point it will be structurally efficient to fix the shape because it's a folding structure which can collapse completely to zero and it can be completely flattened to a sheet and our design is in between the two a flat sheet versus the folded sheet so yeah. somewhere between we have to fix the design and for each position the geometry and the drawing of the structure changes so it was so difficult for them today it was sounding a bit depressed so it's very exciting to come here now and see that the whole structure is up. Yeah. So they got it.
We are working on generating forms that could result in lightweight roofing systems, but we are also looking at generating forms, lightweight form work. So that's why this series is called Light Matters. This is going to be used for children now. Correct. So we have to make everything in that children proportion, size, yes. children's size. Yeah. Correct. Okay, now what we are trying to do is, this triangle is nothing but if I... You make a fragmented of this, this triangle. This triangle. We are trying to make the form work out of paper, so that we are going to use recycled carton. The, the image I have is, you go with a thing like this, which you can carry. It's a cardboard folded structure, you carry it, then you have a another set of the same folded structure which is nothing but chicken mesh so you go to the site put all this in the truck you go there you open it and you rest it the paper structure on it you apply the mesh and then you plaster it and we don't know all of this may not work you know at least if we find out that it doesn't work we know what to do next so we are going to find this out very soon <laughs> all that, even if this is not ready, no? Yeah. Just let the students watch. Yeah. Make that floor and all that ready. And we'll make the landscaping nice so that it should be done yeah. by tomorrow. When you build ferro-cement instead of concrete, the fact that it is so thin means you can save a lot of steel 
and a lot of weight and a lot of cement and all of that. It makes the whole roof light and so therefore the walls are light, the foundations are light and everything. Can I show you that origami structure? Yeah. We made it first in paper and with Rangarao's detailing, we built the whole thing in ferro cement for two and a half, three centimeters. In how many days? In something like four days. And I'm making it in a way that you can even carry in the container. Just to see for some tsunami relief or suddenly if you have to do, we can create something quickly and the form is folded like this, the mesh is stacked, it's only like this much. Mm. How do you bend this mesh, you know, it is, there is a formwork or something? I did or you have a picture, you, I made a... You have something to stiffen like this and you, you fold? I want to eventually do that. But right now what I did, I made the diamonds ah. of that ah. prototype so that the diamond is easy to erect uh, on the ground. In the diamond only I put the mesh mm -hmm. on the ground and two diamonds are straight and the two, wherever they touch, that is the form. If we make the entire thing with mesh, then it will not crack and all because it's the same surface. No, no, that's what I'm saying. If you make mesh like this, yeah. and if you had only not even the diamond, but if you had cups like this, saucers. Yes, that also will work. Because it will work. It and will then, be funicular like... Yeah, then, then what would happen is that you might get another kind of form. So we want to do 4-5 structures to make it come down to 10-20,000 per structure. And for Auroville, it's way cheaper than thatch huts. Is this going to stay here forever? Okay.